Hello, everyone. My name is Gerard Gatch, and I'll be the moderator for today's webinar on the topic of the ContiChrome Cube System, Features and Applications for Large and Small Molecule Purification. This is one in a series of more than 10 webinars on multi-column chromatography for applications in the production of protein therapies. Check out our complete series on the YMC Process Technologies YouTube channel. As mentioned, this presentation is an overview of an advanced benchtop chromatography system. This webinar will describe the instrument's features, which will span batch to multi-column continuous chromatography principles before walking through case studies of two of the system's primary functionalities, the ability to perform the patented capture SMB and the patented MCSGP control schemes. Other webinars covering the cubes enrich and sequential polishing features and the Chrome IQ software are available and go into detail on these novel capabilities. We invite you to explore these and our other webinars that cover these topics and more attributes of the entire two column YMC chromatography platform. These are 15 to 30 minute long presentations by subject matter experts and available on our YouTube channel. Now, the presentation today will cover these topics. Our presenter will first give you an introduction to an overview of the system and the system features, a little bit on how it works, the software and some of the wizards, and then go in uh, and illustrate through the use of case studies, two of the primary functionalities, Capture SMB and MCSGP. We'll wrap up and leave time for your questions. Today's presenter is Thomas Mueller-Spock. He holds the position of Chief Technology Officer at YMC Chromacon based in Zurich, Switzerland. Thomas is an inventor of more than 10 patents and has authored and co-authored more than 30 scientific articles and book chapters on continuous chromatography for biopharmaceuticals. Thomas frequently presents at international conferences as speaker and also co-chairs workshops on continuous chromatography. Please welcome Thomas mueller Spock. All right, again, for the come also from my side. Um, as I will be talking about our Capture SMB and MCSGP. Um, so Capture SMB is a process that is um, a twin column process used for the capture of monoclonal antibodies or other molecules using affinity chromatography from uh, harvest starting materials. Uh, the features of Capture SMB are um, that it, or the uh, advantages of Capture SMB are that it has a two to three fold higher productivity than single column chromatography, that it saves affinity material, and that it can be operated with columns and membrane absorbers. We currently have this process in industrial, in industrial implementation. Um, likewise, the MCSGP process, that is a process used for um, in polishing of um, biomolecules or for purification mainly of oligos and peptides. The advantage of this process is that it can increase yield from 60 to 90 percent typically in these applications and then it can, that it can dramatically reduce um, buffer or solvent consumption. These processes are run on um, or can be run on the Conticrom cube uh, equipment that is available from YMC. So this equipment features in two different flow rates. So one of this is uh, up to 36 milliliters per minute and the other one to 100 milliliters per minute. The pressure rating is up to 100 bar. Um, we have multiple functions within the unit. These are the continuous processes that I've just mentioned, but there are also other processes like enrich, integrated batch, or regular single column batch chromatography. Okay, um, the system can run up to 18 buffers. It has four pumps. It has two double UV detectors with single fixed wavelength of 280 uh, or, uh, and 300 nanometers. So these are two fixed wavelengths installed in this each of the um, detector heads that you can see here on the right hand side on, in the system. Then there are two connectivity cells which are also integrated in these detector heads and this one pH sensor. Um, the system is cold room compatible and it has an external fraction collector. 
it also operates the Chrome uh, IQ operating software for process design operation evaluation. There will be another webinar which is, has more detail on the software that is uh, available. Now on the right hand side you can see other components of the system. These include valves, um, pressure sensors, and uh, also here you have installations to, to mount the two columns. So apart from um, these hardware components, um, there's also a fluid path that is an, uh, has certain capabilities that support continuous chromatography. So if we want to run continuous twin column chromatography, our system needs to be capable um, of performing a number of jobs. So the first job is we want to be able to operate the columns in parallel mode or in interconnected mode, and we want to be able to move from the a liquid flow from the left to the right or from the right to the left column. So that there should be a symmetry with regard to flow direction. Also, we want to have detectors located at the outlet of each column so that we can independently monitor the outflow uh, of each column. Then uh, we also want to have the capability of doing inline dilution between the two columns. And uh, this should be, again, in, uh, available or in, in when moving the stream or when the first column is upstream or when the second column is upstream. So in both cases, we want to have inline dilution in between the two columns. Also, the system should be capable of running linear gradients, and it, has, uh, it should have a number of other uh, software features that make uh, operation easier. Um, let, that are, let's say, nice to have, and that will be addressed, in, again, in a, a different webinar. Okay, so this um, provides an overview of all the processes that this uh, Condichrome equipment is capable of running. So we have capture, polishing steps, and depending on the difficulty of uh, purification, different processes are applicable. It's not always that you need a continuous chromatography process. It can also be that in easy purifications, a single column process is the best and, let's say, optimal process to operate. In other cases, when you have difficult purifications, for example, these uh, continuous processes are the best processes to run. Um, again, all of them can be operated in this system and have been covered also in the past and are available in other webinars. Okay, another important um, let's, um, feature of, of the Condichrome system is the Chrome IQ operating software. So this software supports um, the above or the before mentioned processes. So it supports single column processes like batch chromatography and integrated batch chromatography, which is two uh, orthogonal chromatography steps in a row with inline dilution. Then it supports um, the um, continuous processes, capture SMB, MCSGP, and Enrich. And it has general modules for evaluation and for manual control of uh, the system. Um, so the support for these processes is organized through uh, separate software modules, which are called from the main program and which we call wizards, which help you to design the, um, capture the continuous processes or batch processes in a very uh, guided and quick uh, fashion. OK, so let's start this process. Let's capture SMB. And I'd like to show a case study of process design and, and operation of the capture SMB process. So in order to design the process of capture SMB, we need to start with um, a system that we want to purify. So we have, um, of, of course, our harvest, and we have resin, buffer, uh, and protocols that we want to use. So and with these conditions, we run a single column breakthrough curve on the Condichron system. And then um, we analyze the fractions that are coming uh, from the breakthrough curve using offline HPLC. So this all runs in single column mode. And then we take these um, results and enter the capture SMB wizard. 
um, with the wizard, we design the capture SMB process, we run it, we analyze the fractions, and then we check if yield and load of this process are okay. And then if they are okay, we have, we have finished. If uh, they're not okay, we need to do some fine tuning, which can also be done through the capture SMB wizard. So now um, we go through these individual steps in the following slides a little bit more in detail. So <clears throat> the first step of um, the capture SMB wizard takes um, the breakthrough curve data that we have recorded before and uses the data to derive the operating parameters for the capture SMB process. These are pump flow rate, these are durations of uh, certain loading times. So um, all of that comes from a single column breakthrough curve. So um, the single column breakthrough curve data then is entered in, the, in a field, uh, or it can be imported through Excel into the Capture SMB wizard, where it is then displayed, and the breakthrough curve can be fitted by pressing a button here um, so that uh, we get a close match of um, experimental a data and a prediction using the model included in the Capture SMB wizard. We do additional settings in the Capture SMB wizard, such as entering the feed concentration and the loading flow rate that has been used to record this breakthrough curve here. And then second, we enter also column dimensions from our small scale experiment. Third, we define um, the degree of overloading of the Capture SMB uh, first column. So, for example, we see here that um, this has been selected now to be 50% breakthrough. So we are actually loading, overloading the first column to 50% breakthrough capacity. And uh, again, the loading to breakthrough uh, beyond breakthrough is one of the reasons why we can get this huge process improvement through Capture SMB. Remember that whatever is breaking through from the first column is captured on the second column. Okay, so um, in the second step of Capture SMB, we enter the uh, recovery and regeneration protocol. You can see that here, washing, elution, and cleaning steps are defined. On the right-hand side, we see a list of the buffers that have been connected to the system so that we do not have any risk of, of mix-up that we enter the wrong buffer, let's say, uh, here for, for washing or illusion. So that's, um, again, a guided um, a process um, to minimize errors as you design Capture SMB. Then the final step of the Capture SMB wizard uh, includes entering a number of cycles to be performed. So Capture SMB is a cyclic process that can go on until all the starting material is consumed. We enter a maximum pressure, which is a pressure high alarm. We define collection criteria for the um, product peak collection. We uh, define if we want to create startup and shutdown methods for the cyclic process. And then finally, we enable the uh, UV-based dynamic process control, which helps us maintain a constant load on the column. Now on the right-hand side, you get some process parameter information. This is, this is, these are the outputs from the calculation that have been done by the wizard. So um, the, uh, it gives us flow rates and, 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 and times. And also on the lower uh, right-hand side, we get a preview of the process performance uh, that includes productivity, buffer consumption, load, and others, so that we can estimate our process performance in advance, even before having run uh, an experiment. Then we press save to finalize the method, and then we can load the method into our uh, run control for execution. Now, uh, a few more words of, on the Capture SMB wizard. The wizard is very useful also for scale-up estimations and facility fit calculations. So uh, you can take the data here from this wizard. Again, this is at the stage where you have not even run the experiment. You get the productivity prediction, and let's say you have a certain harvest patch, um, or um, in continuous perfusion, a certain perfusion 
volume that you want to process, like in this case 200 liters uh, in 24 hours. At this titer, you can, using the productivity, calculate the required resin volume. You can um, determine the um, column diameter and uh, column um, dimensions. And with this, you can calculate the flow rate that you would need to run this process, and that gives you a certain skid size for the scale-up system that you need. And also, from these numbers, you can determine buffer consumption and daily required buffer volume, for example. So the, the wizard at this stage already is a very useful tool to do these kind of estimations. So then, actually, we run Capture SMB experimentally to verify the, what we have predicted using the wizard. So this is the typical, uh, a typical chromatogram that we get from Capture SMB with the alternating illusions from the two columns recorded by the two UV signals, uh, UV detectors behind each column. Um, also, we see um, what's highlighted here by the software, the interconnected uh, steps of the process where we have, in the first case, the red column upstream, second case, the blue column upstream, and we see the breakthrough of, mon of monoclonal antibody from the first column, while at the second column we just have impurities breaking through. So this validates also that the wizard has been uh, working well, and uh, we also see that the process is reaching a steady state, as this shows a five-cycle overlay of uh, these five cycles here and confirms that the last cycles exactly overlap so that we have constant product concentration and quality. Of course, we have to confirm the uh, quality of the product by offline analysis, so we collect alloids from these uh, separate cycles and we uh, subject the alloids to offline analytics. So we have HPLC to determine concentration and then uh, aggregate fragment content. And then, of course, we have other analytics like ELISA or DNA um, assays to uh, come up with other, to, uh, to check other uh, purity criteria. From this, we calculate then the purity, yield productivity, uh, capacity utilization, and buffer consumption. And then we can compare these results with, with what we have obtained using the wizard. Uh, it's important to compare the Capture SMB run not only to a single column run that's shown here, but also to compare it to what is uh, called a reference batch. This is um, a run where we have two columns in a row. Because the Capture SMB process has interconnected steps where two columns are connected in series, but it also has parallel steps where the two columns are operated in single column mode in parallel. So here, uh, basically, we have to do a comparison with both to really get a, an overview of uh, over the, the results. So it's also important to evaluate captures and be based on cyclic steady state samples so, and also to determine the performance of the full run. So we should rate, wait until the process has reached a steady state, which is typically in the second cycle. And we also should take into account startup and shutdown steps. Um, the above considerations are also valid for uh, MCSGP, which is a, uh, I show an, in one of the following slides. So the polishing process that is also run with two columns and can be operated on the system. Okay, so with this, um, we come up with um, the, the process uh, performance comparison. So we have the Capture SMB experimental results. We have Capture SMB prediction by the wizard. We have um, the re results from the batch single column run, and we have the results from the batch reference run that has two columns in series. And with this, we can now do a comparison, let's say, in terms of productivity or in terms of load, and we can uh, determine the advantages of the Capture SMP technology. Also, we see the wizard and, and experimental values are uh, very close. Um, there's usually a, a slighter lower um, 
uh, sorry, a slight deviation between prediction and experimental results in case we have a collection by a UV threshold because the wizard does not uh, take into account that the UV um, um, or does not take into account that the product collection may be abbreviated due to UV-based threshold collection. So that's why we find a much lower concentration predicted by the wizard than we actually have in the experiment. Okay, so um, again, uh, it was mentioned before that um, taking into account startup and shutdown is important. So here you see two examples of startup and, and shutdown steps that are operated before the main run. Uh, the startup takes into account that the two columns are empty at, at when the process is, is started, and the shutdown just brings the columns to a state where they both are clean and equilibrated at the very end of the process. And these two uh, steps also have an impact on overall process performance. Of course, the impact is lower the longer the main run is. Okay, so uh, we have once we have operated capture SMB, we may want to optimize the process further. So we have to check if the yield is okay. Of course, we always have to check purity. But let's say if the yield is uh, okay, we can go ahead and optimize the the load, and uh, or we can optimize productivity. And this is typically done by um, uh, changing uh, flow rates and by changing the percent uh, breakthrough value that was shown in the, on the first page of, of the wizard. If the yield is not okay, we need to work on, on the yield. Obviously, um, this could, the, uh, let's say a yield that is not okay could be due, for example, to certain washing steps or the elution buffer. Okay, I'd like to further refer to um, a paper that has been published in 2018 that shows the scale up of twin column chromatography up to industrial, or let's say to pilot scale, uh, together with a major industrial partner. Then the next process I'd like to uh, focus on is MCHGP. So here we have a case study for an oligonucleotide purification, and you will find certain similarities between the capture SMB process design procedure and MCSGP. So very briefly, um, the MCSGP process uh, internally recycles impure side fractions from one column to uh, the second column. This has been shown in, a, in another webinar. And uh, I, I would just like to uh, rehearse that this, this, this key feature of MCSGP because uh, it will play a major role in, in the following slides. So uh, in comparison to single column batch chromatography, again, internal recycling of impure side fractions, while in batch chromatography, the impure side fractions are discarded. Okay, the MCGP process is designed in a similar way like the, as the capture SMB process in the sense that we start from a batch from a single column run. So again, we have our batch design run using certain resin buffer and loading conditions. We run that uh, batch uh, chromatogram. We analyze fractions from the batch chromatogram. We determine now if we have a separation that uh, meets our purity specification in at least a small fraction, so 10 to 20% of the product obtained from this batch run should meet our purity specification. If it doesn't fulfill the purity specifications, we have to choose another batch run, for example, with a different gradient slope. If we do have a separation, we can use that run to do the MCSGP process design. Again, this is done with the help of a wizard. Then we do the MCSGP run. We analyze the fractions using HPLC. And then we do some fine tuning in the very end if necessary. The batch design run is designed using a batch purification wizard that is included also in the Chrome IQ software. Here you just see a screenshot. I will just not go uh, too much into detail just to show you it can run linear gradients and it can do a fractionation as shown here. Now this is the result from uh, such design run operation. We have a linear gradient. We have the UV 
shown here. Uh, the fractions uh, have been taken and analyzed, and uh, we came up uh, with this purity profile and product concentration. You can also see that we have impurities in the front and in the back, which, uh, see, uh, which means that we will have to purify the main product in the center cut purification. This was anion exchange, salt gradient, double-stranded DNA, oligo. Okay, this is the, an overview of the process design of the MCSGP process. So similar as in the batch in Capture SMB, we first load the batch chromatogram, we define the recovery and regeneration protocol, and then finally we have process uh, simulation of uh, the process performance and finalization of the method. First step, loading the batch chromatogram into the uh, into the wizard, so instead of a breakthrough curve like in Capture SMB, here we load the linear gradient run, and we also enter uh, purity data. So uh, the purity data is entered by means of uh, a table into the chromatogram. And then we have to define um, the regions of internal recycling and product dilution. So this we do by drag and drop. And essentially, this uh, shows you like in, uh, what is what's happening in detail. With the lines that we drag and drop, we define the regions of internal recycling of the impure side fractions and the region of uh, product recovery in the center. And also in the back, we define the region of uh, internal recycling. Now, everything that's outside of this region is going to waste. So this we have to take into account that um, everything that's not in the region will not be recycled. But from offline analysis, we very well know where our product starts and where it ends. In the next two steps, we um, first define the washing uh, and uh, uh, cleaning protocol, so the recovery and regeneration protocol. The gradient is taken care of by the wizard. And then in the final step, we define the number of cycles to operate and, again, set the maximum pressure. We get an overview of the process parameters that have been calculated by the wizards, and we also get an overview of the estimated process performance, similar like in the Capture SMB wizard case. Then we operate MCSGP, so we load the methods that have been generated by the wizard into the run control of Chrome IQ, and we run the MCSGP process uh, over the defined number of cycles. So here you see an operation over um, uh, 15 hours, five cycles, and you've seen that the linear gradients of salt and the UV signals. The MCSGP alloids then are evaluated using offline analysis, and we get for each cycle purity and product concentration values. And with this, we can calculate purity, yield productivity, and buffer consumption also. We will also get an idea about the concentration of the purity, of course, which will help us to determine if we have reached a cyclic steady state. In cyclic steady state, product concentration and purity is constant from cycle to cycle. So we can also then plot these results in, a form, in the form of a table and compare it with the prediction by the wizard. And uh, also graphically, we can confirm if we have reached the steady state by superimposing the chromatograms and uh, looking at, at the variations in, in the UV. So here, for example, you can see the first cycle was a little bit off, but then and the remaining cycles, we have very similar UV profiles indicating that we have reached the steady state with a constant uh, product purity and also constant uh, productivity and uh, product concentration, which is then also confirmed later by offline analysis. Then we finally plot the results as a function uh, of yield and, and purity, and we can see the improvement of MCSGP compared to single column chromatography. Here you see a plot 
of um, MCSGP and batch uh, productivity as a function of the yield. This is uh, derived from the um, MCSGP webinar that has been uh, shown earlier. Also, MCSGP um, has some, let's say, typical routes of optimization to increase productivity and reduce buffer consumption. The use of shorter columns is uh, a way to optimize MCSGP. So instead of using two uh, long columns, we use two short columns that match an overall length, the length of the design uh, batch run. Uh, we can load more, uh, or we can run a steeper gradient. All of these changes here, also the increase in flow rate, leads to a larger overlap between product and impurities. But MCSGP can handle this through the internal recycling of the impure side fractions. Um, both processes that I've uh, illustrated here, that I've shown here, um, they are available also on, uh, in large scale. So Condichrome Cube systems uh, 30 and 100 can be scaled up to corresponding Condichrome Twin MCSGP or Condichrome Twin Capture SMB uh, systems. And again, um, I mentioned that these are in already in industrial implementation today. Um, with this, um, I would like to thank you for your attention. And um, before we move on to the Q&A session, I'll hand it over to Gerard to, um, for some final remarks. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Thomas. Uh, that was an excellent presentation. A lot of information. Since 1980, YMC has been a leader in chromatography, producing bench and prep scale HPLC and LPLC systems, packing resin and columns. YMC is a global company with manufacturing offices in over 10 countries. Now, just a reminder that uh, other aspects of this topic that Thomas alluded to and other um, areas that we explore around the uh, new and emerging uh, multi-column chromatography are available on our YouTube channel. Just go to YouTube and search on YMC Process Technologies. It will take you to our, our channel and uh, there you'll find a, a number of uh, other webinars and interesting uh, videos on the technology. Okay, now I'd like to bring it back to Thomas. Uh, for Q&A. Uh, thank you again for your, your questions. Uh, we'll start off and uh, with a very specific question. Thomas, are these systems available in Korea? Uh, yes, uh, the answer is uh, yes, they are available in Korea. Uh, there's YMC Korea, our branch, and they have a lab and uh, support these systems. Okay. Uh, next question is, uh, what special columns are required to run the two column processes? Yeah, so the answer is um, you can use uh, any columns that uh, you would use also in single column chromatography for uh, this multi-column process. Uh, I mentioned that they uh, tend to have uh, shorter bed heights, so you should be aware of that, which will lead to an increase in productivity. Uh, it's also, by the way, um, possible to use the process with, or the system with membrane uh, absorbers. So we've also done that for both capture and polishing. Okay. Um, next question. Can I get a UV cell other than the 280-300 dual wavelength you mentioned? Um, yes, yeah, so for the um, Condichrome system, it's possible to have also a 280-254 uh, nanometer uh, version. Um, and for the large-scale systems, it's, it's no problem. Um, these uh, can have a variable wavelength uh, detectors also. Very good. Um, a two-part question. Do you offer services to perform feasibility studies with our product? I'm assuming that's the person who's asking their product. Um, also, are these systems available to rent? Yeah, so uh, this, let's have the second first. So the systems are available for rent. So there are local uh, offices of YMC which offer rental systems. Then feasibility studies is something that we routinely do. 
So uh, we uh, offer to purify the materials of uh, users, of customers, and we then uh, basically perform what we've what I've shown in what I've showed in this uh, webinar, and then we provide a final report that shows the comparison between the current process of the user and the process that we have uh, designed and that we have operated so that you can see the advantages of continuous chromatography and also get an idea of, of what uh, the, this process looks like when it's scaled up. Okay, so we're approaching the end of our time, but I think we have time. Let's, let's slip in two more uh, questions. Any other questions that are submitted, we'll, we'll answer in writing. Um, let me look here. The, does the unit come with all the software or is that purchased separately? Yeah, so it's configurable. Um, the system can have um, the process that, that you are most interested in, so Capture SMP or MCSGP or any of the others. Single column chromatography is a, is a standard process that, that is always included. And then uh, the final question, uh, can the unit truly operate continuously for how long? Yeah, so um, with the unit can operate also for prolonged periods of time. Uh, we have operated it so far. I think the maximum was four uh, weeks approximately, so 30 days, uh, when it was uh, hooked up to a perfusion bioreactor. So the answer is yes, it can be operated also for uh, multiple days and even weeks. Excellent. Uh, and Thomas, thank you for um, answering uh, the questions for the presentation. Thank you to the audience for your quest questions and presentation. If you've got uh, more uh, uh, questions or any application um, needs, reach out to us at info at ymcpt.com. That's info at ymcpt.com. Okay, we'll end our session now. Thank you and have a good day. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye-bye.